we are recording. Um, well, hello everyone. My name is Anna Bradley and I am a senior project manager for the Art and Public Places program with the city of Austin. And with us here today, we have Kurt Getman, also a senior project manager with AIPP and the co-host managing this project. We also have project manager Alex Herrera and Penny Rodriguez with us. Thank you for joining us today um, to find more up about the Tempo program. We're really excited to have you here through this, throughout this presentation. You'll be seeing images from past Tempo projects, such as the image you see here, Las Piñatas by David Grujon. I want to quickly acknowledge other staff members who are here supporting today's meeting. We have Susan Lamb, the AIPP program manager, and also Sil Rab, the Acting Development Department Director. Thank you to them. Uh, we're recording this meeting, so we've turned off the video and the sound for public participants in order to achieve the best production quality on our recording. Uh, the recording will be available after this meeting and we'll post it to our uh, page and you'll be sending out uh, a link that will also have it. Next slide, Kurt. Uh, so this afternoon, we'll be covering some general information about art in public places, uh, the specifics of the Tempo uh, 2021 program, and letting you know how to submit your proposal for consideration. This is a proposal-based program. Um, our presentation will last about 40 minutes, and will be followed by additional question and answer session. Uh, to ask a question, just type it into the Zoom chat. Feel free to answer your question, add your questions anytime during the meeting. Uh, and if you add questions during the presentation period, we'll circle back during the Q&A. So if, if you're joining the meeting from your computer, click on the chat icon at the bottom of your screen and it's circled in yellow. To access the chat, type into your questions. Make sure you are chatting one, which I think we've enabled so all the participants can see your questions. Next slide. And uh, to access the chat window on a mobile device, click participants. Then on the next screen, click chats. Uh, you can type in your questions here. And again, make sure you're chatting to everyone. So first, a little bit about the Art in Public Places program or AIPP for short. It's a program of the Cultural Arts Division with the City of Austin's Economic Development Department. And the program commissions both permanent and temporary artworks. Next slide. AAPP is funded by a citywide ordinance that sets aside 2% eligible capital improvement project budgets. Uh, those, those eligible projects include things like the creation and renovation of city libraries, parks, fire stations, uh, and, uh, and corridors. Once a permanent or temporary artwork is created through this program, it's a session into the city of Austin's public art collection. There's over 325 public artworks in the collection right now uh, throughout the city. And here are some examples of permanent works in the collection. As you hear, there is a diverse, there's diversity of forms, materials, scales, and a, mixed, uh, and a mix of exterior or interior pieces. If you'd like more information on how AIPP the ordinance or the work of the AIPP collection, please visit our website at austincreates.com. Our entire collection is also listed on publicartarchive.org where you can learn more about individual works there. And of course, feel free to reach out to AIPP staff if you have any questions. Uh, before we get into the details of the Tempo program, we'd like to briefly tell you about how Tempo fits into another initiative taking place within uh, the Economic Development Department. Tempo is funded through the local hotel occupancy tax, which you'll sometimes hear this referred to as hot funds. Um, this tax supports several programs funding local arts, music, and heritage tourism throughout the Economic Development Department's Cultural Arts Division, the Heritage Tourism Division, and the Music and Entertainment Division. Uh, through, equitable, through equitable cultural funding review process, uh, the Economic Development Department's reviewing how hot funds are used through all programs offered with an eye toward equity. Uh, just this past Saturday, our department held a virtual meeting to share some of this ongoing work with the public and ask for feedback. A recording of this meeting will be posted this week for viewing. 
Tempo 2021 is now in progress and early recommendations from the equitable review process are being incorporated. Great. Thanks, Kurt. It's important for us to consider how HOT funded programs comply with uh, applicable legal and policy requirements. Chief among statute in state law governs how municipalities can extend their eligible portions of hot tax towards arts and historic preservations and the city of Austin's strategic direction 2023 that sets forth outcomes areas strategies and metrics for how we deliver services and work towards improving quality of life for our community. Just touch on the high points of each of these guiding resources. The statute directs to support the encouragement, ooh, promotion and application of the arts by investing and in, in the growth of Austin's cultural producers. All funded contracts will present, perform, promote, encourage, otherwise make possible cultural events and assets such as public art that are promoted to and open to the public. To do this work, we must all make sure that we are aligning our investments of hot funded dollars with our commitment to equity, which connects all of the outcome areas of SD23, including the two major areas of culture and lifelong learning and economic opportunity and affordability. Our program must meet the letter of the law as well as the spirit of the strategic direction. Uh, the Economic Development Department is committed to prioritizing the participation of people from historically underrepresented communities in hot funded programs. Uh, through the, sorry, for Tempo, uh, did I advance too far? I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong script. If you just bear with me one second. 10. Slide 10. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, here we go. Early recommendations from the review process are being incorporated into Tempo 2021. For Tempo, this means the, the priority will be given to proposals that directly enhance cultural experiences for tourists and convention delegates by highlighting underrepresented histories and narratives, as well as artists from backgrounds that have been historically underrepresented in the Art and Public Places collection, bringing ideas and voices from Austin's diverse cultures and communities. This includes artists uh, from the Black, African American, Native American, Asian, Hispanic, Latino, Middle Eastern, Pacific Islander, LGBTQIA+, and disabilities community. And now more about tempo, the reason you all are here. This is the eighth cycle of tempo. It began in collaboration with the 2009 biennial and was officially brought back in 2013. In all, AIPP has commissioned 89 temporary artworks through the Tempo program. Tempo is, is administered by Art in Public Places that funds temporary public art as an opportunity for artists in Austin to produce authentic, original cultural work and experiences that mark Austin's art and culture to tourists and convention delegates. In 2021, the program will seek to proposals for temporary public artwork that represent works, 2D artworks, site-specific installations, time-based artworks, and performative works. These proposals can open the door to artists who have, do not yet have a substantial portfolio of public artworks, but who may have other creative experiences that inform their ideas. Next slide. Here's some more quick facts about this year's program. The Tempo program is available for practicing artists who live and work in Austin or the ETJ, which is also known as the extraterritorial jurisdiction. Um, those of you who've gone through our um, cultural funding programs might be familiar with that, but it's, it's loosely defined as areas within five miles of Austin proper. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us to find out whether or not um, you're in, uh, in an area that's uh, eligible. Uh, Tempo is a uh, proposal-based program. Uh, proposals are being accepted for a wide variety of artistic media, including 2D, 
sculptural, time-based installations, and, and many other uh, forms uh, to be located outside uh, Austin public library locations throughout Austin. Multiple commissions are expected to be awarded with an effort to place a commission in each, each city council district. Uh, and the pandemic has meant that there's less hotel occupancy tax going around um, and funding available for this year. Uh, Tempo 2021 is uh, specifically open to proposals for 2D artworks as there was not enough funding available this year to support a separate Tempo 2D program. For 2D works, we recommend proposing uh, projects that may be painted onto a freestanding substrate, printed onto vinyl adhesive, or are similarly removable. This will allow the greatest flexibility in citing the artworks at library locations. The artworks are intended for a 12 month exterior exhibition, not inside. Uh, one of the biggest benefits of the program is that commissioned artists own the artwork after the exhibition period is complete. And so you may continue to show the artwork and, uh, and build your portfolio um, with, with a nice uh, commission tempo um, in there. Uh, artists must consider the installation method or att of attachment. Final installation plan and attachment method must be approved by AIPP and Austin Public Library staff. Uh, artists must create artworks that take into account the Americans with Disabilities Act and are accessible. Each proposal must include an estimated budget ranging from $3,000 to $10,000. Uh, this should include all costs to design, fabricate, and install your artwork. Crowd, crowdfunding or matching uh, cannot be applied to your budget. We encourage you to contact staff with any questions you have while you're developing your proposal, you know, figuring out if something is workable or um, you're trying to, to develop a budget and there's, you have questions as to how much particular things typically cost. Um, with all of our AIP project, the program creates specific this proposal to consider the following. Promote Austin's art and culture to tourists and convention delegates. Foster engagement between artists, artworks, and the community. Link art, local artists with resources and city assistance to help develop skills and experience. Facilitate public discussion, civic dialogue, and collaborative partnering for programming. Promote new interest and in increasing participation in and focus on public art. And lastly, expose Next slide. Uh, Temple's open to practicing visual artists at least 18 years of age, living or working in Austin proper or the ETJ. Uh, artists who have not received a public art commission before are encouraged to submit proposals for consideration. Only one proposal per artist or artist team will be accepted. Uh, an artist may not apply as an individual and also as a member of a separate team for a separate project. Incomplete or late applications will be disqualified. So keep an eye on that, that deadline. Uh, Artists currently under contract with AIPP and temporary city of Austin employees are eligible to apply. Uh, while full-time permanent city of Austin employees or artist teams who have received two previous tempo commissions, either as an individual or a team are ineligible to apply. Thanks, Kurt. Um, and now we'll speak about your proposal application. In your public artist application, you'll upload five to 10 portfolio images of previous original artwork. Please include descriptions, titles, and budgets for each of your artwork in your portfolio. Upload your resume. And if you're applying as a team, please limit your resume to one page per person. At the bottom of the application page, you'll see additional information buttons. Uh, please answer the demographic questions and upload one PDF document, and it will include the following a written narrative, that's your artwork description, and include the relationship of the artwork to the location and your installation and deinstallation descriptions. Uh, number two, images of your proposed artwork. And this could be sketches, computer aided or CAD drawn renderings, or a maquette in a Photoshop collage. And you can add multiple images. It's also a great idea to include the artwork as it would appear in the site location and be as descriptive 
as possible, remembering that this is a proposal. Um, include the library site and estimated location. And this could be an X on a site map location from Google uh, with a screen capture, and it helps the library staff understand if there would be any conflicts in the location. Uh, you'll include your materials list for fabrication and installation, and then finally your itemized estimated budget. And this would include anything like rental equipment, subcontractors, fabrication, transportation, insurance, installation, and deinstallation fees. Don't forget to include a 5% contingency for that one. And tool purchases are considerable capital assets and they're not eligible. Next slide. Uh, you're going to be uploading your proposal uh, to your profile at uh, publicartist.org. Deadline to apply is January 26th, 2021 at 5 p.m. We do that so that we're making sure the staff is on hand to answer any last minute questions or help you troubleshoot any last minute things you're trying to hit submit and something's not working. Um, but we do encourage you to apply to start your application as soon as possible. You can leave it in there pending and, and you know, fill in as you go along. That's a that's a good practice for those of you who haven't haven't done it. Um, Use publicartist.org before. Um, but if you if you're a first time publicartist.org user, uh, hang around a little bit after the Q and A. We'll we'll do a little short tutorial to help you get your um, you know point you in the right direction to getting your uh, account set up. Great. So here are the selection criteria that the jury will be using to evaluate proposal applications. These things include things like artistic ability, proposal safety, site appropriateness, and library department approval. Prior and Tempo 2021 will be given to art, priority, excuse me, in Tempo 2021 will be given to artists from backgrounds that have been historically underrepresented in the AIPP collection to bring ideas and voices from Austin communities. Priority will also be given to artists who make art creation a focus of their practice, who are interested in enhancing civic space, and who have not previously received attention. AIPP has enlisted previous Tempo artists as the voting jury and city and community stakeholders as, uh, respect, as respected advisors. Some local advisors include partners at the uh, the Roz Roundtable, um, Six Square, AAPP panelists, uh, arts commissioners and city staff from library parks and public health departments. So this year, PP has partnered with Austin Public Library and you can see the list of locations here. We encourage you to visit the branch that you're interested in. Some branches will be under construction and will be unavailable for this year's exhibition. Next slide. And here's a brief timeline for this year's Tempo 2021. Uh, the call was released back in November with uh, the artist information meeting today and uh, proposals, uh, uh, proposal applications are due January 26th at five. AAPP is scheduling the selection jury meeting now so that the, the year's recommendations can be reviewed and approved by February 2021 and contracting can begin shortly thereafter. Each artist will present the refined final design proposal to the AAPP panel for comments and approval recommendations. After the appropriate approvals, the artist will begin to fabricate uh, for a July installation. The exhibition will be for 12 months and each artist will, will participate in a virtual artist speaker series to share their process and project and project to the community at large. Staff will schedule and host these events. So please submit your proposals via publicartist.org. AIPP only accepts applications online through this portal. Shown here is AIPP's public artist landing page at publicartist.org slash Austin AIPP. From here, you'll click onto the, the Tempo uh, application under Open Call Selection. Next slide. And that brings you here to the application. You'll need to log into your publicartist.org account 
um, and then uh, click on my applications and, and start uh, start the application there. Uh, creating an account with publicartist.org is free. So thank you all for listening to us for this long. And if you have any takeaways from this meeting, here are the most important things to remember. This is a local. You're going to apply via publicartist.org slash Austin AIPP by January 26th at 5 p.m. And you're submitting one complete PDF document proposal with your application and answering the demographics questions in publicartist.org. And of course, AIPP staff is always here to help you. However, however if you're having technical uh, problems with your application, please call publicartist.org directly and you can email them um, or call the number listed on the screen. They're in San Antonio and they're open nine to five and they're very prompt at getting back to you with your questions. And next slide. And then lastly, before we get to the Q&A, uh, we do wanna mention that AIPP has another open call right now, uh, the 2021-2023 Pre-Qualified Artist Pool. Uh, that's a great list to get on um, to, to be considered for um, permanent artwork commissions. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely something that we recommend people taking a look at. Okay, finally, um, I see we've got a good list of questions in our chat. Start to get to those directly. Um, and just to remind you, uh, we are recording this meeting and we will post it to the AIPP opportunities page. Um, and we'll summarize all of the questions and answers that we go through and include that in a PDF as well. So if you don't get your question answered today, it might show up in that PDF later. Um, so now I'll turn it over to Alex, who's going to be our monitor for the questions. Um, and why don't you kick us off, Alex, with that first question? Sure. Um, let's see. First question is from Vicki. Do the locations include only specific walls, et cetera? Will that be known by each location? Uh, it's up to the artist to scout their locations and make the proposal. So if you go to the list of the pre-approved library sites and you're interested in a particular library, we encourage you to go to that site and, and check, out, check out the real estate. Did you want to add anything? Um, no, but um, I would add that um, everything needs, will ultimately need to be approved by the library, um, especially as it relates to walls. You know, some some older libraries may not necessarily be, um, you know, uh, picky about whether or not something's attaching to the wall, whereas a newer library probably doesn't want any, you know, um, anchors going into the masonry. So, um, and th those are those are great questions to ask before you go too far down a path, uh, whether or not something's going to be feasible. But um, uh, I, hopefully that answers your question. And we're here to help you. So if you have a, a question about a potential site, contact us early so we can do that back end research for you with library yeah. and help you with your application. Yeah, and if, and if uh, take a picture of uh, our email addresses and phone numbers right here, you know, while we're, while we're hovering on this page and feel free to, to reach out to either one of us or both of us or, you know, however you want to do it. But, but we're here to help you between now and January 26th, um, you know, get your applications in there. Um, thanks, y'all. Oh. Uh, from Charles, can we make a proposal for only one location? We would like your proposals to be site specific. However, have some flexibility in reciting your artwork for distribution or equity issues. Um, from Vicki, will this slide presentation be available for viewing after the live talk? Yes. We will post a link to this video and also upload this slide deck to Austin, Texas gov slash tempo. Um, from Caroline, will pieces be moved uh, in any type of convergence this year? No. 
uh, this year's program library sites for 12 months and there will not be a convergence. And for yeah. those that maybe don't know, uh, the, in the past three tempo years, we've recited uh, sculptures to Edward Rendon Park as part of East Austin Studio Tour for a temporary public art exhibition. And we're not doing that this year. But there is a longer exhibition period. This is 12 months at the individual locations. And of course, you know, the, uh, the COVID public health crisis has informed, you know, the way in which we we're running the program this year and, um, you know, trying to be responsible about um, getting people together or not getting people together. And, you know, it's, it's hard to tell when we're gonna be able to get together again, hopefully soon. Um, from David, do I understand that this is a 2D call only? No. Um, to, to um, I guess to, to dive into that a little bit more, um, we've been talking about 2D a lot because we're opening um, this program up to 2D um, again. Um, it was originally open to everything and then we branched off two years ago and we were having a, a separate mural program. But this year we've, we've combined everything so that um, this is a program for a variety of proposals. And if you are thinking about uh, proposing a mural, um, again, we would, um, we, uh, you need to um, propose it for something on a substrate or freestanding or um, look into um, vinyl acrylic products or things that are similarly removable. Um, the, the libraries won't be allowing us to paint directly on the masonry. So it needs to, uh, it needs to be something that you can take off. The upside of that is that at the end of the display period, you own it. So you can show it again or sell it or donate it or whatever you want to do with it. It's up to you. Um, and that's, that's a great benefit um, for, um, for artists, we think, um, that you get, to, you get to keep it. And that's not always the case with murals. But this is open to a variety of medium, uh, sculpture, time-based work, performance work even, if, if your proposals uh, along those lines, we've had some great things in the past uh, that were performance-based uh, and 2D as well, but the, the 2D, there needs to be an extra level of consideration because um, we're not painting directly on masonry. Thanks, Kurt. Next question. All right, uh, similar to, maybe similar to a question that was asked before, but um, from Harriet, are there attachments or pedestals um, that are allowed or not allowed at the locations? Um, are there guidelines? Yeah, are there guidelines available for best practices in public spaces? Yes, uh, we recommend that any sculptural work follow Americans with Disabilities Act guidelines uh, and that intent is to protect um, someone who is visually impaired by going with cane detectability guidelines. This can be solved simply with a four inch plinth where the sculpture is mounted to that. Um, and and um, we do have some best practices that we can post to the website, including using earth anchors, um, threaded rod and nuts, um, as well as um, uh, any kind of uh, temporary anchor. We don't allow poured in place concrete, um, but earth anchors seem to be working the best for these sculptural works. And a lot can be worked out during the design process and the final design process with regards to exact siting. You know, there's, you know, depending on how deep you want to go down, we got to make sure there's no gas line down there, et cetera. Mm, We've learned that one the hard way. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of considerations and you don't necessarily need to think about all of them at the front end, but they will need to be thought through before, before you start putting a shovel in the ground, for instance. And staff is here to help you uh, refine your proposal into your final design presentation, but then we'll move forward to the Art and Public Places Panel and Arts Commission for approvals. So all of that work in your design development will be done um, with the highest regard for safety and feasibility and cost. Thank you. 
and staff is here to help you with that. Great, thank you, Jenna. Um, this one's actually about the pre-qualified artist pool and I can take it if, if you guys want. Um, Please do. Okay. Uh, do you have to be an established artist to be a part of the pre-qualified artist pool? Um, the answer to that is no. Um, you can be an emerging or established artist um, to be selected into the, the pre-qualified artist pool. Um, yeah, we're looking for a range of experiences for that separate call as well. And um, it's not posted yet, but there, if you weren't able to attend the artist information meeting for that call, um, it should be posted to um, the opportunities page um, uh, sometime this week. Um, or you can email me directly. I can, for that, I can put my email address in the chat towards the end of the meeting. Um, next question is from Vicki. If you have different installations for, oh, if you have different installations for each site, do you submit a proposal for each location? You're on mute, Anna. No, it's one application per, per person. Um, but we do ask you to be flexible if uh, your proposal could be recited to another library location. And we're doing this so we can um, attempt to locate artworks in each council district. Thanks, yeah. Um, from Kathy, will there be only one installation per library? we're shooting for is about 10 installations, uh, one installation per council district. So probably no doubling up. No doubling up and not every library location will receive a piece of artwork. There is some curation that happens with staff um, so we can get a nice equitable distribution of these projects. I also wanted to quickly point out that crosswalks, painting directly on the pavement is possible. Um, this may, might circle back to the, the question regarding uh, mural painting, but um, it may be possible for there to be a crosswalk at a library site, depending on the library facility and the manager's input. You know, it might not work at every site, but it's something to consider, uh, think about as you, as you figure out what you want to do. Um. Do you want to take that? What kind of costs can be included in the proposals? I'll answer that. You want to include your design fee, um, installation, restoration, uh, fabrication, materials, insurance, um, studio overhead, subcontractors if you have any, and a 5% contingency. Great. And we answered the question, can people make more than one proposal? No, you can't. Okay. Um, question uh, from Mary, would crosswalks be accepted? Yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we, we answered that before. I think uh, I, I, had, I had gotten a little tip from Sue that there was something in the chat regarding that. So I had read her answer before the question. So yes. Great. Um, from Vicki, do we have to have our own insurance to cover the installation process or does it fall under the city's insurance? All contractors are required to carry a general liability insurance policy uh, with the additional insured. Uh, those expenses range from three to $500 for a yearly policy. And we have a list of vendors that have worked with AIPP artists in the past. And it is something we consider when we set the budget levels that you that you have enough to do that. So, um, you know, they, we also have a, a, a vendor list. It's a little antiquated, but we can have we have uh, if you need it uh, a handful of of vendors to help you get started in your search to uh, to uh, to secure liability insurance. Mm -hmm. um, from April, how many proposals will be selected? We're estimating around 10. So we can have one in each council district. Great. And um, is there a list I can screenshot of COTS proposal requirements or is that in the application page? I think you might've kind of covered this, Anna, 
a little bit, but. Um, you know, we don't have a cost proposal requirements um, per se. It's, it's really what you're gonna need to complete your project. If you're going to be your own person doing the, you can create line items for your labor at your rate at how many hours. If you're gonna be using a subcontractor, those kind of things would be listed in your budget. Kurt, do you wanna add anything to that? Um, yeah, just to say that if, if um, you know, traditionally if, if a muralist is doing their own installation, um, installation work that, um, that you're paying yourself for not only doing design and the, the typical artist commission, but the labor, um, if you if you plan on doing uh, a vinyl acrylic wrap, you're going to want to get quotes beforehand to make sure that you know you have a, a, a pretty good understanding of how much it's going to cost to do the the um, the wrap at the scale that you're proposing, um, because you know the uh, those costs vary from vendor to vendor, so you might want to get a couple couple of local quotes. Great. And if they're and if they're if the if if you're going that route, there may be a crew doing the installation um, too. You, they'll need to to build that in to the quote. Great. Um, so I think that's at the end of what we've got in the chat um, right now. Any other questions that have come up for anyone in the meantime? Drop them into the chat. Um, and I'll just mention that uh, for anyone with pre-qualified artist pool questions, I did add my email address um, into the chat. Um, so please email me directly if you uh, want a recording to the uh, artist info meeting or that call, or if you have any other questions, uh, reach, out me, reach out to me directly. Um, or uh, Maria Teresa Bonet, um, who's the other project manager for that call. All right, um, from Cody, I live in Elgin, Texas. Do I still qualify for this proposal? Unfortunately, no. I don't believe that, that uh, Elgin is, is uh, close enough to Austin. There may be a, a piece that I'd have to, to look at a, a map to be 100% sure of that, but unless Elgin touches um, Austin proper or is within five miles, of, uh, of Austin, unfortunately not. And from April, can we get a link to this recording? Yes, we'll send it out uh, from your event right link and it will also be po posted to austintexas.gov slash tempo. Great. From Larry, you mentioned that there is no cost sharing. Does that include an artist absorbing costs above the budget? Well, this program is really intended to uh, help you navigate a, a, a particular budget. Um, that $10,000 maximum is intended for you to uh, design, fabricate, install, and deinstall this artwork. Um, so we really want to have our artists get paid and, and pay themselves for their work. So uh, we, we want you to work with And do you want to say the last thing you said? I, I think you might have cut out. A oh. little bit. We want the artists to get paid for their work. Uh, we want you to understand how to manage a budget and your time within that proposal parameters. Yeah, don't, don't work for free. Scale, okay. scale the project budget so that you're not, you know, you're not um, not paying yourself. That's, you know, you're, you're going to want to follow that through with every project you do in public art is, is don't lose your shirt. So we will mention with this approval process, we go to a committee called the Art and Public Places Panel, which is arts professionals. And they will be looking at the proposal budget to make sure that the um, money is, is fairly distributed and that the artist is being compensated fairly. 
So it's important to pay yourself in your design time and also in your fabrication time if you're gonna be the maker. Great. Um, question from Karen. Is the 78737 zip code included for app applicants? I live on the edge of Austin and Hayes County. Uh, I'd have to, um, if you could uh, send me an email at the uh, email address on the screen, I'll, I'll be able to look that up for you quickly. Off the top of my head, um, I, I don't know. And I would have to, uh, we have a, a lookup tool that's a little laborious to use, but, um, but we could figure it out relatively quickly for you. And you as a, as a consumer can also go to the Austin, Texas Find My Council District uh, website. And it will let you know if you are in Austin or the Austin ETJ. As a reminder, after we get done with the questions, um, for, for anyone who's not used publicartist.org before, we're going to have a little, little short tutorial, just a few extra minutes after we, we wrap up the, uh, the main meeting. But um, I'd encourage anybody who's never used publicartist.org before uh, to stick around for a few extra minutes. Great, and we've got one more chat question and then uh, we'll wrap that up. Can you read that, Alex? Yes, uh, from Larry, would staff be able to provide guidance on durability requirements for materials, e.g. Um, solar collectors? Yes, I can comment on that. So we have had solar collectors used in previous Tempo projects. Um, I do encourage you to check out the page which has short videos of multiple projects that have been made over the years. Um, I will say that solar panels on the ground will get stolen. Uh, this project that used them uh, created a, a mounting hardware and everything was. So some of that. I think that's our last question. Um, so we have a short one minute survey that we would love for you guys to complete. And this survey helps us uh, get feedback so we can better serve you. So I'm gonna put that in, oh, Alex beat me to it. She put it in the chat. If everyone could take a moment to complete this one minute survey, it really helps us out. And uh, if we don't, through his little demo of publicartist.org. And we thank you all for being here today. Yeah. We're looking forward to your proposals. Thank Seriously. You. And thank you to all, all uh, staff that, uh, that, have, that came to the meeting today and, and help, uh, help us, you know, get through everything and, and make everything professional for you. Alex, Sue, uh, Silnovia, uh, Penny, thanks a lot, you guys, and and everybody who came. Thank you. Send us your questions if if you're if you're trying to figure stuff out, um, and stay safe out there. You know, with it's been a tough year, and uh, hopefully we're we're closer to the end than the beginning of this. And uh, you know, we re we really value our local artists, and we it really is a, a privilege to bring uh, opportunities to you. And I'm going to slowly start the public artist.org stuff. Yeah. For those of you who haven't used publicartist.org before, Kurt's going to go through a, uh, the application uploading process. So I'll let you take it away, Kurt. Yeah. So first thing you need to do when you go to publicartist.org for the first time is, is create an account. And something that we'd like to stress is that um, you know, to understand sort of the architecture here, you create an account, but that doesn't necessarily start your, um, your proposal, your application. Um, this is uh, publicartist.org is a tool used by many different programs. Again, it's a, a company out of San Antonio. So they, they have really great customer service. If you have trouble using it, um, you can call their, um, their hotline and they typically get back within 24 hours, if not um, within the hour. Um, they're, they're as responsive on, on email as well, but you need to create a portfolio. Um, 
you need to create an account. And then it will, it will prompt you to start creating image libraries. Um, and usually, you know, you can, you can start a folder, you can start what's called a project and put all of your um, images in there. Or, you know, you can, you can have each project be uh, an individual work. Let's say you've done a work that you have a lot of detail shots of, or uh, maybe even a video or something that you can, you can have each folder be an individual work. Um, and then once you've built up your image library, um, then you're ready to start your application. Uh, and oh, actually here, this gives you a, a view of um, the kind of information that you need to have handy when you're, when you're um, creating a description of, of each individual image. Now, if, if, it's, if it's all under a single project, sometimes the, you can just have, it'll be one description that will go through all the way. So you have to be careful that your, uh, that your descriptions match, uh, match the particular image. Um, and putting in you know, the height, weight, and, and the dimensions to the best of your ability is helpful to understand scale uh, of, what we're, of what we're looking at. Uh, one best practice is not to um, composite images, put multiple images on the same slide. Um, sometimes that's really hard to interpret for judges and people um, looking at applications. Um, so we, we, we'd uh, ask you that if you want to show a detail to have it uh, be its own slide. And um, the uh, Oh, this is uh, this slide is in here just to give you a pointer to to scroll down. Um, if you're looking at uh, this this first blue arrow um, halfway through the screen, uh, sometimes it's not obvious where the add an image button is once you've gotten all the de the descriptions in there. Um, so make it's it's hidden down here. Sometimes on a standard screen you can't see it. It's below below you know if you're using a 13 inch you know. Um, iBook, it's sometimes, sometimes you miss it, but it's, uh, it's right there. And then um, you can hit uh, choose file here to, uh, to actually grab the image. So that's, that's some, some pointers into actually creating your account, building your image library. Once you've done that, you're ready to, um, to go into the, uh, the front door of AI of, of publicartist.org and click on Tempo 2021 and start your application. Um, we'd recommend starting it soon, even if it's just, you know, to, to go in there and, um, you know, not do anything, but just to get it started and leave it pending and, um, and put things in as you're going along. We've got a question in the chat about applications. Alex, you wanna read that please? Okay, from Kathy, should a team use only one person's portfolio for the proposal? I can answer that. The team can break up their portfolio images however they see fit. Uh, you have a choice of between five and 10 portfolio images. So if you have a team of two, you can do five and five or three and seven, it's up to the team. Okay, well, I think that's it for all of our questions. Thank, uh, thank you everyone for being with us this afternoon. Um, we are and convenient for you and we look forward to your proposals. And again, please reach out to myself or Kurt if you have any questions, we can look at your proposals on the back end before you hit submit um, and don't hesitate to contact us. And if that's it. Um, I think Kathy had like a, a clarifying question. She said, um, should a team use only one person's portfolio uh, for the proposal? But she was clarifying, I mean, the link to public artists. I, I think you mean the profile. Each person cre can create their own profile and you can one person's profile or you can link profiles to create one application. So it's, again, it's up to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that should be it from the chat. Right.
Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We really appreciate your time today. And we'll go ahead and end the meeting. Thank you.